Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Geography. In today's lesson, we will be doing a case study about extreme weather. In this case, the USA and Bangladesh. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. As part of our weather section, let's look at the USA and Bangladesh and how they deal with hurricanes and cyclones. Firstly, tropical cyclones in a developing country, Bangladesh. Cyclone Isla was a severe tropical cyclone that struck Bangladesh on the 25th of May 2009. The cyclone's intense rainfall, 120 mm of rain in a few hours, very strong winds, wind speeds of 270 km per hour were recorded, and large storm surge caused widespread flooding and devastation across Bangladesh. Bangladesh was particularly at risk as it is a very low-lying country, with 80% of the land is less than 10 meters above sea level and many large rivers that can overflow onto the floodplains, during periods of high rainfall. Cyclone Isla had devastating socio-economic impacts on Bangladesh, including 190 deaths 750,000 made homeless 3.5 million affected overall Nearly 60,000 animals killed Flooding caused by a large storm surge which raised the sea level by 3 meters Over half of the flooding embankments destroyed in southern Bangladesh So, what was the preparation and response in Bangladesh? Bangladesh's response and preparedness helped to limit the effects of the cyclone Weather forecasting and satellite technology The Bangladesh Meteorological Department, or BMD uses forecasting technology to predict and track tropical cyclones, allowing communities to prepare for them making landfall. There are weather radars across the country to track weather patterns, and satellite imagery is purchased from the US, China and Japan. In 2018, Bangladesh's first satellite, Bangabandhu Satellite 1, was sent into the Earth's orbit. This $280 million project has made satellite imagery more accessible to Bangladesh, which may support the country's preparedness for future tropical cyclones. In order to increase community preparedness in Bangladesh, the BMD communicates their forecast to multiple sectors, including television and radio stations, airports, the Prime Minister, and the Air Force. In doing so, the information is spread across Bangladesh and people can prepare. What warning and evacuation strategies are used? There are many communities in Bangladesh that have little to no access to television, the internet, or radio. Outside the capital of Dhaka, remote communities have historically been left extremely vulnerable to tropical cyclones as they do not receive weather forecasts and warnings. Bangladesh's government has developed an early warning system that targets vulnerable coastal communities through awareness campaigns. 45,000 cyclone warning volunteers now work in threatened areas around Bangladesh. Furthermore, 3,500 cyclone shelters have been constructed in Bangladesh following the devastating cyclone Bola in 1970. Many of these cyclone shelters function as schools and other public buildings so they are not left empty for the majority of the year. What about the storm surge defenses? Embankments have been built to protect some areas from flooding, though this is usually limited to main roads and areas that need to be protected. Bangladesh has needed financial aid with some of its flood defenses. For example, the World Bank provided $400 million to upgrade Bangladesh's embankment system. Now let's look at tropical cyclones in a developed country. In this case the USA. On the eastern coast of the US, tropical cyclones, called hurricanes in the US, are a very frequent hazard. Between July and October every year, hurricane season hits. Tropical cyclones travel over the Atlantic and make landfall in eastern coastal areas surrounding the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. States such as Florida, Texas, and North Carolina are commonly hit by tropical cyclones. Florida has a 22% chance of a hurricane making landfall every year. What about the preparation and response in the USA? 
The USA invests a lot into hurricane preparedness and response as the cost of damage is usually so high, especially when hitting cities. How do they use weather forecasting and satellite technology? The USA's weather forecasting system is usually very effective at tracking the formation and movement of tropical cyclones. Over 20 weather satellites operate every day over the U.S. and the Atlantic Ocean, gathering information about the location and intensity of any potential tropical cyclone activity. Using information from satellite technology, meteorologists in the U.S. can predict wind speeds, storm surge heights, and the likely track of the cyclone before it makes landfall, and these predictions are usually accurate. Hurricanes are closely monitored in the U.S. by organizations like the National Hurricane Center, and regular forecasts are given on the television, the radio, and online. What about warning and evacuation strategies? The U.S. has developed effective warning systems and evacuation strategies to ensure those at risk are prepared for the storm. Hurricane warnings are widely broadcasted on major news channels, and some areas even have hurricane sirens that sound when there is a high risk of a hurricane. Local authorities play a major part in the evacuation of civilians from areas of high risk. Evacuation orders are issued in areas where it is likely people will be severely affected if they stay at home, and law enforcement visit homes spreading this information, as well as it being broadcast on TV, the radio, and online. Hurricane evacuation routes are established in areas that are often hit by tropical cyclones. The sign is in New Orleans. Flood water marks from Hurricane Katrina can actually be seen on the sign. Another key aspect of tropical cyclone preparedness in the U.S. is the education of the public concerning their personal risk. Every year, the National Hurricane Center runs National Hurricane Preparedness Week, which aims to spread awareness about people's risks and tell them how they can be best prepared for a hurricane. All of this is funded by the U.S. government. The USA also manages risk through hazard mapping, which identifies areas that are particularly vulnerable to tropical cyclone hazards. For example, here is a map of the risk around the Gulf of Mexico and the eastern coast if a Category 4 storm was hit. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration analyzes and provides this data and it is free to the public, increasing public awareness about areas of high risk. What about storm surge defenses? The U.S. invests a lot of money into storm surge defenses, such as levees, embankments, and storm surge barriers. However, the U.S. has been criticized heavily for having poor quality storm surge defenses, and these defenses have been breached on multiple occasions. After Hurricane Katrina, man-made levees failed and flooded 80% of the city of New Orleans, and 1,577 died in the state of Louisiana, where New Orleans is located. Some areas that are extremely prone to hurricanes have taken precautions to lower the risk to property from storm surges. This house is an example of a hurricane-proof home. It is built on stilts to ensure it is high up and resistant to flooding from storm surges. The building is made out of concrete which is resistant to very strong winds. Windows and doors can also be reinforced to be resistant to heavy winds, and resistant to breaking if they are hit with flying debris. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.